You know, whatever you, whatever image you try to put on Allah, it will be from something you saw. You have to perceive. You cannot talk about things. You cannot perceive of things except that your senses have perceived them. So whenever we try to picture Allah, we will picture Him in terms of His creation, one way or another. So we worship Allah without giving Him any of the likenesses of His creation. Fourthly, when we worship Allah through the Tawheed al Asma wa Sifat, we do so insisting that we do not give human beings Allah's names and attributes. As we don't give Allah human attributes or the attributes of His creation, we also should not give the creation the attributes of Allah. Which is what has happened in certain groups. You can find it in the Old Testament, New Testament, where they speak of Melchizedek. Melchizedek is described as being without father or mother or genealogy. He has neither beginning of days nor end of life. This is one without beginning or end. This is Allah. So we cannot give these descriptions to human beings. And this is the area within which or through which Shiites deviated from mainstream Islam. I know some people think it's because they believe in muta, temporary marriage, or other things that they have in their system that they have made permissible, which the main body of Muslims do not allow. But this is not really the area of difference. The area of difference with Shiism is this area that they have given to their imams. It's all about the imams. That's why for them, belief in the imams is one of the pillars of faith for them. As we have Arkanul Iman, we have the six pillars of faith. For them, belief in the imams is one of their pillars of faith. What does belief in the imam mean? It means that they believe that the imams, these 12 individuals, not including Khomeini, they talk about Imam Khomeini, they don't mean this. They mean Ali, Hassan, Hussein, this is two sons. And from Hussein, another nine descendants who they call together the 12 Imams. Now, what are the qualities of the 12 Imams? First, among those which are the qualities belonging to Allah, is that they are absolutely infallible. They cannot commit error. Not even error of thought. Not even to think wrong. A mistake. Accidentally, deliberately, inwardly, outwardly, no way. No, some people, you may, if you mention this to Shia, they may say, no, 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 we don't believe that. No, no, we don't believe that. Well, there is a book called The Faith of Shia Islam. And it's not one book, but there are many books like this. Rid written by Muhammad Rida Al-Muzaffar, one of their scholars. In which he states there, on page 35, on page 32, We believe that an imam must be infallible. That is to say, incapable of making errors or doing wrong, either inwardly or outwardly, from his birth to his death, either intentionally or unintentionally. What does that mean? We say, that is Allah, incapable of error. Otherwise, as the Prophet ﷺ said, all of Adam's descendants commit errors, including the Imams. Including the prophets. So, this is the beginning of their deviation. Secondly, they claim that the Imams have absolute knowledge. They have knowledge of everything. Everything that was and would be. Past, present, future. 
and they, this knowledge is intrinsic to them, we say that is Allah. Only Allah has knowledge of all things. And again, you will find Shiites will say, no, 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 we don't believe this. But when we go to the faith of Shia Islam, as well as the book called Islam put together in Tehran by a group of Muslim brothers, edited by Saeed Akhtar Rizvi, we find there Muzaffar saying in the same book, same pages, we maintain that the powers of the Imams to receive inspiration has reached the highest degree of excellence. And we say that it is a divinely given power. Well, however you say they got it, think about what it says. By this means, the Imam is able to understand information about anything, anywhere and at any time. What does that mean? Knowledge about anything, anywhere, at any time. And of course, you will find uh, in their main book of hadith, equivalent to our Bukhari, Al-Kafi, chapters which headed, the Imams know when they're going to die, where they're going to die, all this kind of information. The third major point is what they refer to as Al Wilaya at Takwiniya or Al Khilafa at Takwiniya. We call it the creational caliphate. What this refers to? What does this refer to? As Imam Khomeini said in his book called Al Hukum al Islamiya on page 52. Certainly the Imam has a dignified station, a lofty rank, a creational caliphate, and sovereignty and mastery over all atoms of creation. Sovereignty and mastery over all atoms of creation. This is the statement. This is in their books. And this is by, it's not obscure books by obscure, because of course, you can pick up, if you talk about mainstream Islam, you can find some obscure books with all kinds of nonsense in there, right? And they say, well, we don't really believe this, this is some obscure individual. We're talking about Imam Khomeini, the leader recognized by the main body of Shiites of the world, the Ithna Ashriyas of Iran and Iraq, as being their modern leader, source of knowledge you know, ayatullah, right? So, that's their belief. And this is where they have deviated.